Welcome, welcome. Uh, I'm Rhett Power from Forbes.com. It's, it's great to be here today to, to have a discussion with Alex Boises, Boises, Boises uh, from Deal and Carl Sun from Lucid. Uh, and uh, the last year, uh, two years really, uh, we've seen this incredible turmoil in the way we work. Um, we've got the mass resignation that's going on now. And we, we were talking backstage and, and you, you come, you're, you know, Lucid was really an office culture and Deal has never been in an office. I don't think you've ever been in an office, <laughs> Alex. <laughs> um, so I think this is going to be a really fascinating discussion about the, how collaboration and how onboarding and how bringing on talent is really changing and, and what you guys are doing as, as CEOs to, to hire and, and bring in talent, keep talent, and how are you getting teams in a, in a remote uh, situation to collaborate. So uh, let's, just, let's just get started. Uh, what, what have you guys learned? And we're just going to have a back and forth. What have you guys learned in the last 12 months that really stands out to you about um, you know, with COVID and everything, what, what, what really stands out to you in the last couple of months? That what's something that you've learned? Yeah, uh, a couple of things stand out to me. Um, the first thing I'll say, and, and hopefully we'll talk about it a little bit more, is I, I think you talked about remote work, remote collaboration. I actually think remote collaboration is quite broken for right. many, and I dare say most companies. I think. Remote communication, that's something we figured out pretty well over the last 18 months, two years. You know, there's Zoom calls or Teams calls or whatever it is. And so we see each other, we talk together a lot. But actual remote collaboration is, is, is something that most companies struggle with. And I think they're starting to realize that. So, th so that's the first thing. The other thing I'd say is we've realized the importance of um, giving each other our coworkers, especially sort of the benefit of the doubt. I think, mm. you know, when you're not there, when there's not that human element, sometimes right. you, uh, it, it's easy to lose touch. It's sort of the idea that, you know, you can flame people a lot more online than when you see them in person. And I think sometimes you take things out of context, things get misconstrued and relationships are able to fray if you aren't very deliberate about giving up e each other the benefit of the doubt. So that's something we stress a lot inside Lucid. Yeah, yeah. You know, what I'll say for us is uh, onboarding is super important. Uh, when you're onboarding people, you need to give them a, a really good experience that gets them comfortable with the company, with the best practices of the company, and that really sets you up for success. And the second part is trust. You know, when you're building a remote team, when you're not all in the office next to each other working together, trusting your team is what uh, we've found to be the most crucial things. Uh, if not, you end up micromanaging everyone. And if you want to scale, you know, we've scaled, for example, this year from 50 people to 400 people, which is, you know, it's pretty intense. Building the right mechanisms for people to understand that they can take ownership and that they're trusted in their work. And it's okay if they need to pick up their kids in the middle of the day or they need to shift their schedule around. Is really one of the cheat code, I think, of remote work. What are, th what are some things that you have tried in the last two years uh, to foster communication and to foster collaboration? Some things that have gone well and some things that didn't work, didn't work out so well. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah you know, for us, um, you know, we use a tool called Roots, for example, uh, which matches you with a person every week inside of the company, so you can create uh, interesting interactions across the different departments. So building a lot of those mechanisms for people to feel like uh, they're part of the team, the same way that they would be if they can tap on each other's shoulder in an office, has been really right. crucial. Um, so doing you know, as many activities for the company from, you know, we're doing an all hands event or product event every single week is really what forms some of those bonds and keep people aligned with the company's vision and the company's mission. So being very intentional in terms of what you're putting in place for your company to grow and being very mindful of the fact that they are distributed. And sometimes you know, we have people in APAC, we need to do two all hands to make that work, right? Like right. those things are the, what the glue that brings everybody together on that front for sure. Yeah. A uh, couple things have worked for us. You know, the first is, I think when we do company all hands meetings, we used to, uh, you know, do them in person. Like, you know, we'd have a little stage, we'd bring people in. First of all, we're, we're too large now. We can't get everyone together. But then, of course, with people being remote and we've got offices in Australia and, and the Netherlands, right. uh, that's harder. But, but what we found is our, our company meetings actually are better now because, you know, we're doing them over Zoom. 
Uh, but we have the Slack channel going, and everyone is able to pile in. And it's just fun. Actually, it's fun when you're presenting and you've got the Slack channel on the side and you see the comments coming in and you know, the different GIFs that people are, are posting. And people are actually more engaged than if they were sitting in the audience just sort of listening to, to us talk about something. That's one thing. Um, the second thing I would say, and this is going to sound like a product pitch, um, but here goes, is you know, we, we actually have used our own products. And it's, it's helped us tremendously. You know, when COVID started, we actually felt this pull from customers. And we built uh, our, our new product, Lucid Spark. It's a virtual whiteboard. We actually brought that online in four months. But we actually used our product to help design the new product, if that makes sense. It took us about a month to get going where we could actually get in it, but it was amazing how much easier it was for our product team. We had to revamp the way we do product strategy and product development, yeah. but people getting in, getting all those ideas in the same place where they could see what other people were working on, they could make comments, and all of it lived right there, and it sort of became this war room um, that's still there to this day, and people come, can do that on dude. Uh, have you guys noticed in, in the last year, is, is there sort of screen time sort of fatigue. I don't want to say the word Zoom fatigue, but uh, is there screen time fatigue? And, and are you doing anything to sort of com combat how much time people spend on their screens every day talking to one another? Yeah, we, we don't like meetings that deal very much. We try to avoid them as much as we can. Um, often meetings could be a Slack message, right, or, or an email. So um, we, we always set the agenda before meetings. So it's very purposeful so that we can limit those Zoom times for sure. Um, but it's important sometimes you know, for alignment to make sure that you've got the right people in the room and, and you can get some of the stuff done as well. So I think setting up some rules for what is a meeting, what's the purpose of it, rather than just you know, getting in a room without an, an agenda is, is very critical. And you'd be surprised how, how many of those actually happen um, at companies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, you know, you, I agree. Um, I, I certainly feel it. Um, you know, it's, you know, e even when you were meeting uh, you know, you had a full day of meetings if you were in the office. You at least had the breaks in between meetings where you were walking from one room maybe to the other room. But on Zoom, it's literally you click the button to hang up and then you're, you're clicking the next one to start. And right. um, it, it is very tiring. And so I think th that idea about having meetings when, when it's necessary, when it's useful, and, and having set agendas and you know, being able to facilitate coming into it prepared and knowing what you're trying to accomplish, yeah, th th those, are, those are super important. Yeah. Working async as much as you can is actually very, is very good, right? Being able to, you know, these things you can do very efficiently around documentations and building to just set up the right processes for the team to be able to scale on those fronts, right? Um, that, that has been one of the foundations of how we've built most of the things we do at Dale. Yeah, I, I, had a, I, I was talking to a CEO the, the other day, and he was telling me that at the end of the day, he, he would leave his home office and he would change clothes. And so his kids knew that when he had his work clothes on, he was in, in, in office mode. But then when dad put on his, his, his home clothes, he was off for the day. And he cut it, you know, cut it off at 6 o'clock. He was, wasn't going to do anything after 6 o'clock on, on video. So I thought that was a really interesting way to sort of separate your, your home life and your work life. But, uh, Moving on to another topic I want to ask you about, and that's onboarding. And, and then we're going to get into uh, retaining talent. How are you onboarding people that have never uh, been in the office or been you know, around your culture? How do you bring them into the culture remotely? Yeah, so, so we've been very deliberate in making sure that um, we, we have a structured program, but then we also have more unstructured mentorship. Like each person comes in and gets assigned someone whose who's part-time job is to make sure to check in on someone and make sure that they're learning all the ropes, all the things that you know, no one thinks to tell you in the formal you know, onboarding. This is the tools we use. This is how you get into Slack. This, right. is, this is how the email works. This is where you know, the wiki is and things like that. So I think that's been very deliberate. I think trying to still foster some informal communication, some gathering some meetups, you know, whether it's having lunch over Zoom or in our case, because we still have people sort of geographically concentrated getting together outside of work. Um, I, think, I think those are all ideas. But, but look, there are people, especially who have started with us and maybe moved, uh, you know, somewhere and, and didn't know anyone before. And they feel pretty isolated. And, and it's probably not surprising. You know, there have been, we've, we had a couple of 
crises, like with people, j just you know, mental health wise, um, they've really had to take a step back. And you just have to make sure your managers, your your executives are are attuned to that, and and making sure that they're uh, proactively, affirmatively checking in on people. Yeah. <clears throat> Similar for us, you know, we we're very purposeful. Like we're very thinking deeply about our onboarding. Uh, we've got you know onboardings on Mondays and Thursdays. Everybody onboarding on the same month is in the same Slack channel. We're using a buddy system actually, um, so a two-way buddy system where someone that has been at the company for I think over six months needs to take care of you for the first month while you're at the company, and a person that's onboarding at the same time as you is your buddy for the next you know hopefully lifetime at the company as well. Um, so I think those things make a difference. Uh, some people don't realize, but um, it can be, uh, you know, I've, we've had some amazing people that used to work at companies like Bloomberg or um, you know, Stripe, and those are companies where the culture is very in-office. Joining a company that distributed that doesn't have the same mechanisms is, is hard. So um, you got you to think through that and, uh, and put the right things in place, for sure. Yeah. I really love the idea of a social sponsor and a buddy system. I mean, like, that's, a, that's fabulous. Uh, let me ask you, what are you thinking about in terms of you're going to ba back to work uh, uh, plan? And I, I know you guys are going to continue to be remote, but uh, how, what are you looking at in terms of re recruiting and retaining talent uh, you know, going into 2022 and, and, and beyond? What, because right now there's a talent shortage, or at least uh, it's hard to, to bring people in, get people, good people. What are you thinking about and how are you going to do that? So we're not going back to work. We are working all this time <laughs> right. because uh, remote. You know, the way we look at remote work is, uh, it's, it's for me, it's not the, the fact that you're not working from an office, right? It's the ability to be able to tap into this huge talent pool, right? And, and this is what Deal is all about. So, mm -hmm. the fact that we have people from all over the world, and we're going to keep on hiring people over the world, and this is what we do actually. We help companies do this compliantly. Um, we plan on uh, hiring as many people as we can from whatever country they're from, and, and giving them the opportunity to work with us. Okay. Yeah, and for us, I think hybrid work is the key, and hybrid work is, is here to stay. Um, you know, what works for us, we've found, is people actually like to be together and like to spend time together. Now, they also want the flexibility. They want to be able to, you know, you know work from home or work remotely mm -hmm. uh, some of the time. But we see real value, and our employees actually affirmatively see real value in being together part of the time, too. And so that, that's important. And, you know, quite frankly, that's more challenging, I think, than being fully in office or fully remote because y you've got that challenge of some people are here, but other people are not, and how do you make sure that everyone's on equal footing? And, and that's something that I think a lot of companies are, are thinking about and um, starting to realize that, that they're going to need better ways of doing work, better software, better tools, systems, just to make sure that everyone is heard as part of that hybrid work process. And you mentioned this, right? The, the great resignation is just the companies are going to be forced to give flexibility to their employees, right? They, they're going to have to listen to them and, and build programs and, and frameworks for them to be able to work in a way that's convenient for them, right? Is it, it, that's a great, I want to follow up with that point because uh, how should a company go about doing that? You know, what's, what's the process you think, or, or rec like if, you, if it was you, how would you create a policy that everybody can buy into? Uh, because that's, that seems to be the challenge of where a lot of people are failing right now in putting these policies in place is they, they put it out there and, and it, it doesn't make anybody happy. So Yeah, you know, for us, um, we just let people do what is, what is right for them. Uh, I think we found actually a small hack is... Uh, we allow people to get WeWork memberships, and they can work from whichever office they actually like in WeWork. And a lot of them like to gather in the same WeWork, which is kind of interesting, right? They'll say, hey, today we're all going to that WeWork, and they'll meet up there. Um, so you know, I think every company will have a different uh, way to think about it. But our way is, I just want you to do what's right for you. And if you feel like it's getting a membership, if you feel like it's getting an office, as long as you're productive, as long as you know, this is where you get your best work done, then you should do it. Yeah. Yeah, in our case, I think we're trying to balance what you know, each employee says that they want individually with what makes sense for the whole company. Because, look, we, we do have some employees who are like, I, I want to just be at home the whole time. I never want to see anyone. And that may actually work best for that person. Like, they may actually function best that way. But I'm not sure that's best for the team that they're working with. And so we're asking people, like, OK, I, I get that you want to do that. And we're going to give you flexibility. but. For the benefit of others, like we need you to suck it up and just come in and be with other people a little bit. And I think 
if you're explaining to people what your rationale, what your mentality, and the reasons behind it, I think, I think people are very, you know, rational. That they, they, they want their coworkers to succeed as well. So, so it, basically, you're, what you're saying is really build it in collaboration with, with everybody. But you have to keep in mind the the good of the company at the, at the end. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I want to ask you a, just a, a closing question each. What what's your biggest lesson that you learned? Uh, uh, biggest takeaway. It, it, it doesn't have to do anything with this, but. What's your biggest takeaway from COVID in the last two years, and has it, how has it changed your thinking about your business? Sure. Um, I, I would go back to sort of what I started with, which is I, I think collaboration is, is fundamentally broken. Like, we talk a lot, but we don't actually work well together. And I think for the longest time, you know, before COVID, when most people were sort of in an office, I think that was masked by the fact that we were just always together and we could get in the room and, and hash things out. But you know, what, what, what we found is that you know, people said, hey, I'm more productive when I'm, when I'm at home and I can get more done. And you've probably heard that story from a lot of companies, a lot of people. And I think that's true in some limited sense, right? Like you can crank out more material if you don't have meetings, you don't have uh, other things to do. But what we hear consistently from our peers, and also our customers is that that bridging tie, that creativity that I is really being lost because you're more productive, but you're sitting in a room doing your own thing, or maybe you're working with your limited team of five, six, maybe up to 10 people that you work with every day. And those are the people you see on Zoom all the time and you work with them, but you're not seeing the other, you know, if you're 400, the other 300, people, in our case, we're a company of 800, you're not seeing all those other people, you're not seeing what other departments are doing, uh, you're not getting that bridging tie. And, of, and people right. are, you know, so, so we're, we're all getting more siloed, and it's that next wave of creativity and the next wave after that, that is fostered by collaborative productivity that people are really worried about. And I think that's the challenge that companies are going to be trying to solve going forward. That sounds like that should be one of the things that you're really keenly focused yeah. on too. Absolutely. Yeah. I think for us, you know, what we've seen is uh, we've seen a lot of companies investing in their people team and in their people stack. I think head of people has become the hottest role in the Valley over the last uh, two years. Um, so, you know, I think the biggest learning we had is that uh, people team are doing a lot of heavy lifting, specifically in those times where a lot of things are uncertain and they need to figure this out. And the companies that are spending the most time focusing on employee experience have been the companies that are winning the talent war for sure. So. Being, mean, you know, being meaningful in everything you do on that front is what separates you from most of the companies that are trying to hire today with a, a lot of capital. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Thank you, gentlemen. A pleasure to have a, this conversation. Thank you, Rhett. Thank you. And uh, that's it. All right. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you.